if talking about body dissatisfaction, eating disorders, or food and diet culture in general is going to be upsetting to you, please skip this video. There will be another one. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cammie and I am a chronically online college student. Today's content is going to be a little bit different than the videos I've produced before in that this video is going to be a reading of an essay I wrote in 2022 for my English course. This video will also be a little different than last upload as a lot of my sources were YouTube videos. So this time, instead of reading quotes, I'll be inserting the videos I used as my sources. The links for all of which are going to be in the description below. This essay is titled, Does Social Media Make Us Feel Unattractive? Imagine scrolling through one of your many social media feeds. How many posts include a scantily clad individual flexing their muscles or showing off their curves? How many of these posts make you second guess your appearance? How often do you interact with content that is actively triggering you without you even realizing it? I know in my personal experience, in three minutes of scrolling on my Instagram's main feed, I'm shown over 10 triggering posts that feature body checking or body shaming in some way, as well as a multitude of posts promoting diets, plastic surgery, or some other cosmetic product advertised to enhance your quality of life by removing your wrinkles and skin texture. I'm here to speculate that despite there being multiple overall factors and causes of feelings of poor body image, the accessibility to social media sites such as Instagram and TikTok, and the pressures therein greatly influence feelings of body dissatisfaction. From photoshopping, beauty filters, and trends, algorithms meant to determine your attractiveness, and plastic surgeries being so openly advertised, there are hundreds if not thousands of potential triggers being thrown at social media users in every scroll or swipe. During this essay, I will evaluate a small handful of some of the causes and factors that can create body dissatisfaction, as well as some of the effects of a person's pre-existing body dissatisfaction when the above-mentioned factors are present. This was such a hard essay to research and write, and it is honestly a little tough to represent now. Uh, it was extremely triggering to research, which I had already assumed this would be. I feel like this topic is so important to research and shed light on despite the triggers to my own mental health. However, if talking about body dissatisfaction, eating disorders, or food and diet culture in general is going to be upsetting to you, please skip this video. There will be another one. I did eventually find writing this essay to be a rewarding challenge, though finding conclusive answers to my question was even more difficult, as everyone on the internet has a differing opinion on everything. <laughs> I will shamefully admit I wasted the majority of my time for this essay looking at various articles and videos to use as sources to end up deciding that they didn't really fit the direction that I wanted to take my essay. So I scrapped two pages of rambling and started at square one with research. I then completely changed the direction I wanted to go. Originally, this essay was going to be about the effects of inspiration sites and blogs on individuals already suffering from eating disorders. However, during my research, I found that most of these blogs and sites are now relics of the past, the early 2010s, and that everyone, not just those struggling with eating disorders, is exposed to content that can be harmful to one's body image multiple times in one day, even one hour. This concept is morbid, but fascinating. How many people develop new feelings of body insecurity or self-loathing as a result of social media? The National Eating Disorders Association, also known as NEDA, defines body image as a person's thoughts, perceptions, and attitudes about their physical appearance, and further describes the differences between positive and negative body image. They say body dissatisfaction, another term for negative body image, involves feelings of shame, anxiety, and self-consciousness. Based on these definitions, I know I have personally struggled with negative body image, as have many of my peers and my elders. Though the medium used to influence us that makes us feel negative about ourselves has changed and evolved over the years. While preparing for this essay and in my personal research, I spoke to many people, including my mother and some of my friends of varying body types and ages to share their experiences with body dissatisfaction and the media pressures that may or may not have played a role in that. My mother shared that during her youth, in addition to television commercials, the biggest influence of beauty standard and also the biggest pressure to imitate were the Madison Avenue models. 
According to my mom, these were the it girls who were usually thin, white, and doe-eyed, and every girl wanted to be just like them, and every guy wanted them. The goal for every young teen girl now may be to get Instagram or TikTok famous, but for my mother and her peers, to be a Madison Avenue model was the dream. My mom also struggled with negative body image due to pressures at home. My mom has shared that there were years long periods in her life where her mother refused to take any photos of her because she was too chubby. I know that this has been something my mother's continued to carry with her because she's very critical of her own body. The woman has always been extremely physically fit and hikes mountains for fun, miles at a time. And she still stresses about feeling fat and feeling unworthy as a result of that perceived fatness. I think I'm going to put in my own little editor's note here. I might want to cut this next part because I remember I, I, I wrote this trying to like appease her. Okay, anyway. Despite her obvious struggles with food and disordered eating, my mother has, as long as I can remember, tried to promote a how you feel matters more than what you weigh type of attitude around food, eating, and body image. I still developed an eating disorder in my teenage years when I was living with my father, though. He had just lost 200 pounds around this time and decided that I, too, would benefit from losing some weight. I was made to feel unworthy and unattractive because of my weight and my inability or lack of motivation to lose it. I now face these same pressures from social media. Looking back, I may have been overweight, but I wasn't obese, and due to being in the death grip of puberty, I was going to look and feel uncomfortable in my body without attention being called to it. Of this added attention and pressure from my father and the negative passive pressure from my mother caused me to search for help with losing a hundred pounds in one month. And I was exposed to a whole world of people just like me on forums and running Tumblr blogs all about feeling unworthy because of their perceived fatness and how we could lose weight at any cost to achieve that worthiness, as well as how not to get caught or how to get away with it if anyone asked or caught us purging. By being exposed to these sites, not only did I feel the pressure of being unworthy from my father, but also the greater society of the internet. Constantly reminding me that if I didn't have a thigh gap or a negative BMI, I was not going to get the love or attention of anyone. Ever. These communities still exist, but not as blatantly and not in the same locations. They've manifested themselves in a new way that every person's now exposed to body checking content. There are trends, algorithms, and filters designed to get a person to consume or create this content without them even being aware of it. Body checking content is any content that involves showing off your body in a way to seek information about the way that your body looks. This content originally was popularized on sites and blogs dedicated to pro Anna as individuals taking photos of themselves where their ribs, spines, or other various bones were protruding. Body checking content has now evolved into checking to see if your face is symmetrical, comparing the shapes of your body in baggy clothes versus revealing clothes, and filters that will show what you look like with this or that plastic surgery. There is strong evidence supporting a rise in the rate of trends involving some type of cosmetic enhancement, whether surgical or injectable. Yeah, don't you know your face as it is is awful and you need to change it in every possible and fathomable way? This is what social media influencers and advertisements tell me and all my friends all the time. As Salem Tovar pointed out in her video essay, How TikTok Makes You Feel Ugly. This is actually like a really big problem. And because of the way TikTok is set up and its algorithm, you can't really like get rid of it. If you just so happen to run into it, then you just kind of run into it because of the way TikTok is set up, which is a never ending streaming service, essentially. They're gonna be in the algorithm. They're gonna show up in your feed, no matter how hard you try to get rid of them. There is a weird obsession with beauty, a weird obsession with checking if you're attractive or not on TikTok. And that is just the truth. We see it all the time. So my body type is tall and broad and my friend jessica is on the opposite side of the body spectrum than me she is very petite by all definitions and i have always felt jealous of her appearance yet she says that she faces the same amount of pressure from social media that i do but her pressures come from feeling undesirable as an extremely skinny person especially when the trends have shifted from low-rise jeans and 
being skinny to slim thick and the trend being BBLs and breast implants and lots of curves. She admits she's thought about plastic surgery to meet the standard forced upon her by influencers and marketing companies. And that even the hashtag body positive content makes her feel bad about her body because very rarely does she see women that look like her in those videos. So she doesn't feel represented, which I in a way can understand why she's not seeing her body. But at the same time, I can understand how not having that representation can hurt regardless of your body type. We have both faced the same pressures to look the opposite of how we naturally do. And I'm sure if we did and turned into cosmetically created twins, society would change its mind about what the standard for being attractive is, and it would still leave us feeling unworthy, insecure, and now out of all that money. Side note, I feel like this is what is so debaucherous almost about certain social media trends and body modification trends and fashion trends that involve like hair and body shape is that it is always shifting in and out from skinny's in, fat's in, curvy's in, slim thick, triple thick, which means that regardless of where you sit on the body type spectrum, at some point during your life, society is going to be against your body and society or the internet or media at large is going to make you feel like you are unworthy because of the body that you have. Right now, it's all about muscle mommies and I am not, I mean, I've got a little muscle, but I'm not a muscular person and I quite frankly, like food more than I like exercise. So I'm gonna stay a chunky girl. But it does make me feel really insecure to see all of the likes and praise and comments and popularity of a specific body type being promoted at me constantly. Conversely, it's really upsetting to see people who do look like me get absolutely thrashed by randoms on the internet because of how their body looks. Anyway, back to the essay. It's crucial to point out that no one cause or factor influences a person's body image, but social media plays an enormous role in how people view themselves and how those of us with pre-existing insecurities interact with the content and with each other. I think the main takeaway is that all of us as individuals are going to perceive ourselves as beautiful in some ways and ugly in others. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, some nonsense. I could write books on all the different nuanced factors into why people are made to feel unattractive by the internet, but I've already exceeded both my page limit and the due date for this essay. In short, an individual's increased accessibility to social media sites that feature harmful trends, filters, and algorithms can more likely negatively impact their feelings of self-worth and attractiveness due to the insurmountable pressure presented to them at any time. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm checking my notes. I wanted to make this as concise as possible, but I also didn't want to like fully script it. So in this next section, I'm going to be speaking um, very openly and very vulnerably um, about my own body issues and uh, how those issues came about from some certain factors in my upbringing. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna try and keep it as concise as possible, but if you don't wanna listen to this, that's totally fine. So I genuinely struggled while filming and while editing this video, um, which is crazy, because I thought that just writing the essay was triggering, but when I had written it, I hadn't even begun to unpack some of the issues that I have relating to food in my own body. I'm going to take this time to talk about my parents um, and how their behavior as adults modeled and set examples that caused me to internalize certain attitudes and behaviors about food, exercise, and body image in general. As you'll see, I'll insert pictures. Uh, my body size and shape has fluctuated massively uh, throughout the span of my life, especially during my childhood. The one thing that stayed consistent was a flow of comments from my parents about diet, exercise, and other people's bodies, which made me quickly internalize some really harmful views about my body and how its size or shape determined its value or worthiness. Quick message, if any of their close friends and family are watching this, I honestly recommend leaving. I'm going to be sharing some really harsh criticisms that you may not want to hear. However, if you do decide to continue, I really hope that you take this to heart as it's intended because this issue has been one of the many factors that have influenced the current station of our various relationships. Some of these issues were expressed to them while I had a relationship with them. A lot of this though has been processed because of the lack of pressure um, of their just presence. With their influence and control and opinion no longer being a factor, I've been painfully honest with myself about the people that helped raise me and the relationships 
that we, as well as they, had. And yes, I'm trying to use this as a way to illustrate the effects of parent-child relationships and how what you say in front of and to your children will stay with them, but also because I really just want to vent some of this shit. With that, I spoke about my dad more in the essay than I did about my mom, so I will keep the discussion about my father brief. Their influence was easier to recognize so much sooner due to some of the like blatant messaging I received from them about my body and bodies like mine. I know I mentioned some stuff about when I was a teenager. I just want to take this time to mention the very first time I ever remember having my body negatively criticized, at least to my face. I was 10 years old. It was August 2008. Her two sons and I were on vacation for her birthday in Hawaii, and child of divorce means that things were always a little contentious, but I had outgrown my swimsuits because I had a growth spurt. And so I remember uh, my my father and his wife angrily discussing how, how dare I not have a swimsuit that fit, even though it had fit when I left for the trip, I had just had a growth spurt. So we went down to one of the local shops and uh, I found the swimsuit. I really liked it. It was a cute little bikini. It had these cute little ruffles and it was this really pretty like light blue and white kind of like gingham. And I remember putting it on and for the first time like having a little bit of body confidence. You know, I had never really looked at my body or felt any way about it good or bad. It just was. But I put on this swimsuit and I felt so pretty. And I was like, oh my goodness, I look like the girls from school. I look like the other girls on this island. So I, I come out of the dressing room all excited, my hands on my hips, I'm showing off, and without missing a beat, says, mm, I don't know, Cam, I think you're too fat for that one. To this day, uh, crushing. Whether she knew I was feeling confident in my body or not, she took all of it away by saying, maybe find a one piece. Nobody wants to see your belly. You're too fat for a two piece. I was 10 years old. Who fucking says that to a child? But yeah, I, other than what I already discussed in my essay, I think like that is the most important thing to point out about my father is that I think that yes, the messaging came from him, but I think the messaging was more in general from his wife because of her body type being extremely athletic and extremely petite. Now, now on to my mom. Um, my mother and I have always had a very complicated relationship, and I think that that is a fair and forgiving adjective. And I'm not here to talk about the ups and downs of our relationship over the last 27 years. Um, I'm really only here to talk about uh, how things she did or said or didn't do or say during my childhood and my early teen years, how it affected my current relationship with my body image. As I highlighted in the essay, the relationship I have with my mom has always been better than that of me and my father's. Since I was a teen, he and I have always been very like far removed from each other. I wouldn't have called it no contact, but I also would not have called it a relationship. My mother and I, however, have always had very complicated relationship, but we always come back to each other, which is why um, the fact that we're not currently speaking while bringing this essay back up has been excruciatingly difficult for me. Uh, I love, I love my mother, and I want nothing more than, <sighs> sorry, and I want nothing more than for us to have the relationship that I see most mothers and daughters have, uh, but unfortunately that is not the circumstance. Hmm. With that being said, however, I am optimistic. I am tr I am trying to be optimistic that with time and space, we, we might recover. <laughs> Having the last seven months without her around me to reflect on the why of some of my long health issues has been eye-opening. Um, okay, so a lot of what I said in my essay is true. During my early childhood, my mom was always about how you feel is more important than what you weigh and health over weight, you know, mindset. She always encouraged me to be outdoors and to be active, and this woman has been an outdoor activity specialist, or in, in some way otherwise outdoorsy my entire life, as mentioned in the essay. However, I think it becomes very clear now at 27 years old and realize that my mom had some internalized messages of her own because of her parents that was internalized for herself, but then became externalized with me. During most of my childhood, I was super active, but then uh, puberty hit. Was also on a bunch of like psychiatric medication, so I got huge. And while my mom didn't go to the extreme of not taking photos, the only reason I know about that is because my mom let me know that her mom would have not taken any photos. My mom always tried to preach that there are things more important than my looks, like my brains, but she's the same person who, if she has a, a sweet treat, will say, I feel so bad, I need to go take a hike. And seeing her damaged relationship with her own body and her own relationship with food really impacted my own. She signed me up for Weight Watchers, and that was really detrimental to my disordered eating because it caused me to hyper fixate and hyper focus on all of the negative aspects of food and diet, counting points, counting calories, and it very, very quickly devolved into an eating disorder that she didn't even see because all she saw out of it was that I was getting something out of the Weight Watchers program and that I was losing weight. She didn't know that I had begun excessively exercising to make up for any food I had. There is also the reason that I have the long held belief that I have to do something to earn food if it's not health food. So if I want to have a, a pizza or something that's not a 
salad. I now have to do some serious mental work to remind myself that food is neither good nor bad, food is neither positive nor negative, and sometimes I just want pizza because pizza is good. But when I tell you it's taken me the last two years to get here and I'm still not where I'd like to be, I recently did have a relapse into my eating disorder due to the stress of processing with the emotions of being no contact with my mother. And now I'm focusing really hard on getting back to a place where I focus less on the calories and more about just making sure that I eat something every day and reminding myself that I don't have to do anything to be deserving of a meal. And I know because of conversations I've had with my mother that her intention was never to create an eating disorder within her own child. Her intention was never to make her child feel badly about their body or their relationship to food. But I think it perfectly illustrates how as a parent to take an emotional inventory to make sure that you're not passing harmful beliefs or behaviors onto your children. The passive messaging that I got from her further enforced the blatant and direct treatment that I got from my father and his wife of because I am heavy, I am unworthy. Because I am chubbier, I am not deserving of love, affection, or the things that I like. This has been, this has been a lot to unpack, more than I thought it would be, and uh, it has taken me three days editing just to get to the point where I can sit here and talk to the camera about the effect that my parents had on my own body image and how hard it is to unentangle those beliefs once you've internalized them. This was extremely uh, challenging, very uh, cathartic. Um, I hope that in my sharing this that somebody is able to gain something about the importance of how we speak to and around children. I've been holding on to the comment my stepmom made for 17 years and no matter how badly I want to let it go, I, I can't. Anyway, this has been long enough and with that, I'm gonna cut to the outro. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was a really fun essay to revamp and turn into a video. Is there a way that I could limit my content consumption to feel better about it? How do you do it? Also, if you were my professor, what grade would you give this video? As mentioned at the top of the video, all of my sources will be listed in the description below, which you can follow to start your research if the topic piqued your interest. And with that, the video is over. I will see you next time. Bye.